All right, so let's look at the next example. Okay, we see it's the same region. What's changed is the axis of revolution, so let's get our diagram. Same points of intersection. Okay, now the axis of revolution is the horizontal line y equals 5. So we can see at this point of intersection the y coordinate is 5, so it must be that we have a horizontal axis of revolution here at y equals 5. And what's important to note is now the axis of revolution is on top of our bounded region down here. But we're still going to go ahead and draw in our representative rectangle. Okay, and so we just continue the way that we've done before. We just put, place ourselves on the axis of revolution lining yourself up with the rectangle. And now we're going to have to look down to locate the rectangle. So when we look down, the closest distance to the rectangle is going to be at the top of the rectangle, and we're going to call this our inner radius. So when we revolve around um, y equals 5, we can see that this is going to sweep out the hole, the gap in our solid. Placing yourself back on the axis of revolution, lining up with the rectangle, looking towards the rectangle, the greatest distance is going to be to the bottom of the rectangle. So this is going to be called our, let me put it on this side, our outer radius. Because that radius of that washer is going to include the, um, the hole, the radius of the hole, and the radius of the solid. So that's our outer radius, uppercase R. So everything's in place for what we need to do the setup of our integral. We're going to have an outer radius squared minus an inner radius squared. With respect to x, we need a square here. So coming back over here, looking for our outer radius, well, what's the distance okay, that would represent in terms of x, our outer radius? Well, now this time it's going to be 5 minus the bottom curve. So we're going to have 5 minus, and it's important to make sure and put parentheses in here because we have multiple terms that represent our bottom curve. So 5 minus x squared plus 1. Okay, and then for the inner radius, go back over here and look at the representation of that inner radius with respect to x. So the distance can be found by taking 5, the higher y value, and subtracting the y value on the linear function. So 5 minus quantity negative x plus 3. It wouldn't be wrong if these were switched if you had x squared plus 1 minus 5 and negative x plus 5, or negative x plus 3 minus 5, that would be okay. And the reason it's okay is because you're square squaring. And if you had these in the opposite way right here, you're just going to get a negative number right here, but when you square it, it's going to turn out positive anyway. But it's probably best to go ahead and try and set it up the way um, we see it that would give us a positive number. Okay, um, whether I do this by hand or whether I do it in the calculator, I'm still going to want to probably do a little bit of cleanup on this integral. Okay, so we're going to have 5 minus x squared minus 1 when I distribute. Okay, so that's going to clean up to negative x squared plus 4. And I could FOIL that. It wouldn't be too terribly bad minus over here when I distribute clean it up I'm going to have x plus 2 
quantity square with respect to x. And this wouldn't be too, too terribly bad either to square. But we're just going to go ahead and we're going to go to our calculator and get an answer. Okay, so the volume of this solid is going to be 108 pi divided by 5. And that's a pi. All right, let's take a look at the last example. Okay, we've changed a little bit the region here. We want to do something a little different. So let's go ahead and draw the graph. Y equals X squared and Y equals 2X. Maybe something like this. Okay, and the two graphs, the two equations naturally form a bounded region. All right, so we're looking at the region y equals x squared, y equals 2x in the first quadrant, so that would be this region right here. Notice the axis of revolution is vertical now. It's the y-axis, so here's your axis of revolution. Okay, go ahead and draw in your rectangle. Well, remember, our rectangles are going to be perpendicular to our axis of revolution, so in this case, we're going to have to put in a horizontal rectangle, something like that. And what's going to become important are the y-coordinates of these points of intersection. Well, we know this ordered pair is the origin, 0, 0. Okay, we could either use the calculator to find where these two graphs intersect, okay, or we can set them equal to each other algebraically and solve. But the ordered pair here is going to be 2, 4. All right, let's establish our outer radius and our inner radius so we can set up our integral. Okay. Again, what we do is we stand on the axis of revolution, lining ourselves up with the rectangle. In this case, we're going to be lining ourselves up horizontally. All right, we're going to look towards the rectangle from the axis of revolution, and when we get to the rectangle, we'll get to it first here. So that distance is our inner radius. That's going to be, as we rotate around this way, that's going to be the radius of our hole, okay, of that wash washer. Back on the axis of revolution, looking towards the rectangle, the furthest away from the axis of revolution would be to the right of the rectangle. So this distance right here is going to be called your outer radius. Okay, and I need to make an adjustment here. This should be our outer radius in terms of y, and this should be our inner radius in terms of y, because we're going to be integrating with respect to y. The thickness of this rectangle is dy. Okay, so this should be r of y, oops, and little r of y here. So I'm going to have a little work to do because if my radii are in terms of y, that means I need to solve these equations um, for x in terms of y. So I have a little more work to do here before I can set up the integral. So y equals x squared extract the roots, we're going to have positive negative square root of y equals x. Well, when we think about which one should we use, the positive or the negative square root of y, that's going to require us looking back over here at this graph. Okay, because I'm in the first quadrant, that's where this comes in as well, because I'm in the first quadrant, Okay, I'm going to use the, um, I want a, a positive x value because I'm in quadrant one, so that means I'm going to want to have the positive square root of y and not the negative. The negative square root of y would be over here. Okay, so the x I'm going to be using is square root of y. Okay, likewise, I need to solve the linear function in terms of uh, uh, y, so solve for x in terms of y. So take y equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, so x is going to be equal to half the y. So that's what uh, this linear function corresponds to. Okay, so we've solved our equations for x in terms of y. Now it's time to do the setup. Okay, the integral that represents the volume of the solid is going to be pi times, we need limits. Okay, and our, remember our limits with respect to y are going to be our y limits, so we're going to choose 0 and we're going to choose 4. 
it would be tempting to use 0 to 2, but remember, integration with respect to y means y limits. Okay. So I need the outer radius squared, so that's going to be r in terms of y, minus the inner radius squared in terms of y with the differential dy. Okay, so let's get an expression in terms of y over here for the outer radius. So here's the outer radius. To find that distance right there from the axis of revolution to this side of the, the rectangle, I need to take the furthest x, the greatest x, so that's going to be on this curve right here, so that's going to be the square root of y minus, and then over here, this is going to be x equals 0, because anytime you're on the y-axis, it's x equals 0. So right curve minus axis of revolution. So this is just simply a square root of y minus 0. Okay, and a representation for the inner radius is going to be this distance right here. So it's the right x. Okay, so in this case, we're on the linear function, so it's going to be y over 2. y over 2 minus this left x, which is 0. And this was not bad to clean up at all. This will just be y, and then this will just be y squared over 4 with respect to y. Integrating this would be very easy. Two little baby reverse power rules for each of the two terms, evaluating from 0 to 4, multiplying by pi. But using a calculator, with that being y1, and doing the necessary keystrokes, we get a volume of 8 pi over 3. Okay, so that's it for the washer method. We just have to be aware of the location of the axis of revolution to the rectangle so we can establish um, representations for the outer radius and the inner radius and then we know the structure is to square those and then continue with the calculus of integration to find the volume of that solid.